exploded the autodromo Jose Carlos Pachi in Interlagos, Sao Paulo for the running of the Brazilian Grand Prix, the final race of the season, where three drivers still have a mathematical chance of winning the driver's title. Coming into this week, the final five seats for 2019 have been confirmed. So without further ado, let's get cracking. The first team news of the day concerns McLaren, as they have announced that 2017 DTM runner-up Kirishima De Rosa will remain with the team for another season. Kira has had a mixed season with most of the bad luck he has had not being his fault. He currently lies 16th in the Drivers' Championship, 4 points ahead of his current teammate Roberto Gamba, and his team McLaren lie 9th in the Constructors, 10 points behind their nearest rivals Toro Rosso. Kero's highest point this season has to come at Monaco, where he finished second after doing a one-stop strategy, taking his first ever top-class podium and McLaren's first since Japan 2014. Kero will be relieved to still be in the top class next season, and he'll be looking to put 2018 behind him and have a better 2019. He will partner alongside Paulino Tomaselli, who was confirmed at McLaren back at Hungary. As a result of this news, it means that Roberto Gamba will be leaving the team at the end of the season, which was to be expected given the tricky season the Italian has had this season. And unfortunately for Roberto, the news doesn't get any better, as the second team news concerns Alfa Romeo, as they have announced after so much speculation that Italian GP2 veteran Andre Vaderi will make his top class debut with the team in 2019. Andre has had a mixed 2018 season in GP2, with the second half of the season faring better for him. He finished the GP2 season in 10th place, having lost on account back to 9th place Dennis Graf, and his team Chiruz finished 7th in the team's championship, one point behind 6th place Prama. Andre came so close to getting a top class seat for 2018, having put Williams down as his number one choice, however he missed out on the second Williams seat to American Lean Compana. Andre will be happy to finally make his top class debut in 2019, and he will be looking to make an impression in his rookie year. He will replace fellow Italian Paulino Tomaselli, who will be moving to McLaren for 2019. As for Roberto Gamba, it is bad news for him, as unfortunately for the popular Italian, he has found himself without a drive for 2019. The third team of the day concerns Force India, as they have announced that Hungarian Roland Motron will remain with the team for 2019 when the Silverstone base outfit rebrands itself as Racing Point. Roland has had a brilliant 2018 despite a few hiccups during the second half. He currently lies 11th in the Drivers' Championship, 6 points behind Italian Paulino Tomaselli, and his team Force India lies 7th in the Constructors, 12 points behind 6th place Sauber. Roland's highest point this season came at Spain, where he finished in a brilliant 4th position, just missing out on a podium. He would have had a podium place finish at Russia, were it not for a 15 second time penalty that he received after causing an accident with Ferrari's Armour car. Roland will be relieved to still be in the top class next season, and he'll be looking to continue that momentum that he's been showing this season into next season. He'll partner alongside George Rowe, who he will reunite with having been teammates with him at Force India back in 2010. As a result of this news, it means that Taravi now Terrano will be leaving the team at the end of the season, and unfortunately with not that many seats left on the grid, it means that the 2015 GP2 champion has been left without a drive for 2019. The penultimate team of the season concerns probably the most talked about team in this year's silly season. That team being Austrian energy drinks company Red Bull, as after so much speculation with it going back and forth, they have announced that the man who will partner alongside Franco Gamba next season will be 2009 world champion Miklos Gau. Miklos has had a tricky 2018 season, with the last part of the season being very crucial in his future in the top class. He currently lies 5th in the Drivers' Championship, having overtook his current teammate Joel Hutter in the standings last week, and his team Red Bull lie 3rd in the Constructors, over 200 points behind 2nd place Ferrari. Red Bull haven't achieved a victory this season to the shock of everyone, and have suffered a lot of reliability problems, which has prevented them from mounting a real challenge at the title. Miklos will be relieved to remain at the top class next season, and he'll be looking to put 2018 behind him and have a better 2019 when Red Bull switches from Tag Heuer branded Renault engines to Honda engines. As mentioned earlier, he'll partner alongside Franco Gamba, who was confirmed to be a Red Bull driver back at Hungary. The final team news of the season concerns Renault, as after so much speculation, they have announced that two-time world champion Jay McKenzie will remain with the team for another season, having just missed out on a Red Bull drive for 2019. Jay has had a mixed season with a lot of high and low points during the course of the season, which has led to him being behind his teammate Evan Byrne in the championship. He currently lies 12th in the Drivers' Championship, tied with Brazilian Gabriel Gomez, and his team Renault lie 5th in the Constructors, 10 points ahead of their nearest rival Sauber. Jay will be a bit disappointed that he missed out on an opportunity to be at Red Bull for 2019, but he will at least be safe in the knowledge that he's at least got a drive for next season. Jay will be looking to improve on this season, and hope that he can do well enough to one day rejoin a front-winning team again in the future. 
Unfortunately for Julius Anderson and GP2 champion Davy Suarez, they have both missed out on an opportunity to be on the top class grid for 2019. As a result of this news, we now have a complete grid for 2019. So just to recap, here are the teams and drivers for 2019 in current Constructors Championship order. Mercedes will retain their lineup of championship contender Franco Lopez and four-time world champion Florian Volker, who could become a five-time world champion by the end of Wednesday. Ferrari will retain their lineup of championship contender Armar Carr and two-time world champion Joseph Willows. Rebel will retain 2009 world champion Miklos Gal for the eighth successive season, and he will be joined by 2011 GP2 champion Franco Gamba. Haas will have a new lineup consisting of two GP2 promotees, which are Brit Chris Chatfield and 2018 GP2 runner-up Jared Fosbury. Renault will retain their lineup of two-time world champion Jay McKenzie and Irish veteran Evan Byrne. The renamed Alfa Romeo team will retain 2017 DTM champion Gabriel Gomez and he'll be joined by Italian rookie Andre Vaderi. The renamed Racing Point will retain Roland Mottrin and he'll be joined by four-time race winner George Roke who will return to the Silverstone based team and reunite with Roland for the first time since 2010. Toro Rosso will have an all-new lineup consisting of Formula E promotee Matteo Catalan and GP2 promotee David Kupak. McLaren will retain Kirishima De Rosa and he'll be joined by current Sauber driver Paulino Tomaselli, Williams will retain their lineup of Felix Sontag and Lee Campana, and Manor will retain 2017 GP2 runner up Maxim Titkoff, and he will be joined by 2018 DTM champion Rosetta Martinez. With these news out of the way, we now know that along with Joel Hutter, Etienne Jones, Ennis Baratski, and David Greenwood, these three drivers will not be on the top class grid in 2019. These are McLaren's Roberto Gamba, and the two biggest ones, which are Toro Rosso's Laura Chong and Force India's Taravinal Terranon. These three drivers may end up as test drivers of 2019, but whether they will or not remains to be seen. Speaking of which, 5 of the 11 teams have already confirmed their test drivers for 2019 and they are on your screen right now. Mercedes will have 2010 GP2 champion Rifki Fakrazain, Red Bull will yet again have Ray Hall Patel, Alfa Romeo will have Irishman Aaron Curtis, Toro Rosso will have Russian Formula E driver Ruslan Proxyuk, and Manor will have former Williams driver Adam Wolf. The other six teams, which are Ferrari, Haas, Renault, Racing Point, McLaren and Williams, are still yet to announce their test drivers for 2019. Certain drivers will be offered a test role later tonight, so if any of you have missed out on a drive for 2019, or you have put your name down for a test role but you haven't been offered yet, keep an eye out on either your Twitter, Discord or any other social media platform, as you could be offered with a test role for 2019. The remaining six test drivers will be announced on Saturday night via the GP4 OC Twitter. In other news, the lineups for GP2 next year have also been confirmed. And just like the last two seasons, here is our GP2 commentator Robert Ionescu to go through the teams and drivers for the 2019 GP2 season. The 2018 GP4 OC GP2 season has been a very entertaining one. With Jared Fosbury, Chris Chatfield, David Kupok and Nandika Federi being promoted to the top class, the grid for 2019 has changed quite a lot. How so? It's time to find out. First up, the team's champion Zard Grand Prix will be retaining Thomas Anderson and joining him will be Henry Watson making the move over from BWT Arden. Campos will have a whole new lineup of two re returnees coming over from Formula E. Those are Lorenzo Tomaselli and Tomas Pasqual, both of them with some history in GP2, of course. MP Motorsport are next, and they will retain the services of Jake Galloway, who won uh, his first race in Brazil, and he'll be joined by, by a rookie coming in from Formula E, that being, of course, Ruslan Protsiuk. Skydent will have a whole new lineup as well, with Thomas Bennett staying at the team, but uh, of course with Chris Chatfield gone, he'll be replaced by Dennis Graf, the German, who had a good end to the season, will be making a step up to Trident. Dams have uh, the whole new lineup as well, with David Suarez not signing up for a seat, and uh, Juan Minguyan uh, not being on the grid for next season. Their lineup will consist of Daniel Adventure and Isaac Fashere. Prema Racing is up next, and they're the only team to retain the same lineup from last season. That lineup, of course, being Aaron Curtis and Ben Wallinger. They've had a decent season in 2018, but uh, they'll be hoping for some uh, better action in 2019, some better results. Up next is uh, Charouz. They're going with a different name, though, and uh, they'll be known as Sauber Junior Team by Charouz. Of course, with the main Sauber team being renamed Alfa Romeo in the top class. Trump Carfi will be remaining at the team, and he'll be joined by the BTCC champion, uh, Gabriel Cuntino, uh, making his GP2 debut. Rapax is up next and they have a whole new lineup. Two rookies making the move from Formula E, and those are Mariko Kalevich, the Bosnian driver, and he'll be joined by the New Zealander Joel Watterson. Up next is BWT Arden, and Kyle Burns will be remaining at the team, and he will be joined uh, by a driver making the step up from DTM, and that being of course Dudu Kurbi. Up next is a team previously known as Russian Time, now they're known as Univirtuosi Racing, and Max Killen, uh, the 2018 Rapax driver, 
We'll still have a scene in GP2. He'll be moving over to Uni Virtuosi. And he'll be joined uh, by the new debutant uh, from DTM, Rahul Patel. The Brit will be hoping for a good uh, GP2 debut season. Finally, it, uh, the last remaining team is Carlin. And Nicholas Zorbak will be remaining on the grid uh, with the British team. And he'll be joined by the returning Jamie Griffiths with uh, the Welshman coming back uh, from DTM. And uh, those are the lineups. We've had a crazy entertaining 2018 season. And I just can't wait for 2019. Let's hope it's just as entertaining, if not even more. Thank you to Rob for yet again going through the teams and drivers for next season's GP2 Championship. It is looking like it will be another great season for Tier 2. One name that you may have noticed was not on the 2019 GP2 lineup was the 2018 champion Davy Suarez. This is due to the fact that the reigning champion didn't put his name down in the 2019 GP2 sign ups which means as a result that if he wants to continue to race in the GP4 OC fraternity, it means that he'll have to apply for either DTM, Formula E or BTCC. Same applies to anyone who has missed out on a drive in either the top class or GP2. However, you better be quick because the sign ups for all three of those tiers will close within the next few days after the 2018 season draws to a close. Whilst on the subject of sign-ups, a reminder to anyone who hasn't that the sign-ups for the off-season endurance series will close tomorrow, straight after the top class race in Brazil. And finally, in other news, these are the criteria that the championship contenders need in order to win the title. Both Amar Car and Franco Lopez will need a bit of luck on their side in the race as they are 19 and 20 points respectively behind championship leader Florian Volker. So who will walk away as the 2018 world champion? Will Franco Lopez in his first season with the Silver Arrow become the first ever Argentine to win the title? Will Amar Car finally break his duck and win his first ever world title and become Ferrari's first since 2015? Or will Florian Volker yet again make history and become the first ever five-time world champion in the series and thus become the first driver in GP4 OC history to win a championship with three different teams? Tune into the title decider tomorrow to find out who out of these three drivers will become the 2018 GP4 offline champion. And that is it, not just for this week, but also from Series 6 of the GP4 OC News. I would like to take this time to thank Yuri yet again for allowing me to do this series for another season, and I would also like to give a huge thank you to everyone who has been supportive for this series, especially during the pilot and first episode, when the news was presented in a different format due to my Macintosh laptop breaking on me. Again, thank you to everyone for understanding the situation I was in at the time. The GP4 OC News will return midway in 2019 where we will have another 10 episodes and a pilot episode to determine the lineups for the 2020 season which will be the last top class season to use car performances based on real life before we switch to the fantasy era for 2021. But until then, I've been JW97, your presenter of the GP4 OC News and I will see you very, very soon.